Craftsman has the tools for you. There's more for your life. It's more for your life. Hello everybody and welcome to Sears. Abandoned and frozen in time. We are here at my local Sears located in Toledo, Ohio. More specifically uh, here in the Westgate Village Shopping Center. And today we're going to take a little tour of Sears, show you the outside, give you a bit of history. And then later on at night we're going to be returning and I will show you what it looks like on the inside because they leave all the lights on here 24 seven every day. And you can see what it looks like inside. This Sears was built in 1960 and operated all the way up to its closing days of September of 2017. So this Sears has been here for over 60 years and was in business for 57 years. So the first thing you'll notice about this Sears is this is a standalone store. A lot of people are familiar with Sears being an anchor store in malls, but this one is a little different. When I was doing my research on these standalone stores, I noticed that they weren't that common and the reason why is, even though this was built in 1960, in the 50s, Sears knew that the American shopping mall was going to be a big thing. So they created their own development company called Homart Development Company. And instead of just putting anchor stores of Sears and malls, they just developed their own malls. Over four acres and nearly 190,000 square feet. And back then, they called it a big box store. If you want to see what it looked like inside during the final days of liquidation, I'm going to put a link in the description below of someone who actually filmed it. Now this is what I consider the front of the store, which has three entrances. Upon entering the front entrance of the store, if you take a look, and you can't see it now, there used to be lettering in bronze and gold that would greet customers that came into the front. And that lettering would say, Satisfaction Guaranteed or Your Money Back, Sears Roebuck and Company. That motto stood up there for 57 years and unfortunately when the store closed someone went up there with a stepladder and a paint scraper and it's gone. I want to show you the original handles of this door. If you imagine thousands of people touching and opening these doors, the amount of wear One interesting little thing about the front of this store is you can see they have these benches that are made out of concrete recessed into the wall. And back when this shopping center was built back in the uh, 50s, they offered free bus service. So you can imagine the decades of people who sat out here either to get some fresh air or catch a bus. It's very interesting. This other entrance here, well, it used to be an entrance, but now it just looks like it's uh, an emergency exit. 
you can really see this uh, original stone and tile work on this building. Even up here, all along the edges are these stainless steel accents. Runs all the way across one side of the store to the other. I can't help but point out this giant camera that you can see here pointing at the front entrance. That thing has to be over three feet long. Imagine how much that thing weighs. And then as you look to the right, for comparison, you can see a modern day camera. I mean, just look at the size of that thing. As you walk along the uh, side of the store, you can see these really cool 60s era inspired rocks these tiles every other square along the whole perimeter of this building and as I look up you can see one of the original lights literally hanging by a thread just like Sears was for quite a number of years for America shop. So as I was looking at an old photo of this Sears, you notice this original brickwork here is different from this brick because this used to be all windows. In fact, based on the pictures I was looking at, this all was windows. That's why these bricks are different. And it had their display with their mannequins and, and everything. And I don't know when or why they decided to brick this up and make this Sears more like a windowless bunker, but they did. We're now approaching the other side of the store. The first thing you notice is look at the wear of the stone. It looks like it's made out of slate and is just shedding away. And you can see where the paint has chipped away and reveals behind it the original brick. This is likely what it was when it was built in the 60s. There was the second look. There were the second look at Sears, where America shops for value. Now we're over here on the east side of the building, as you can see. We're gonna take a look at the entrance up here. This east entrance was well known for kids because just inside the door from what I've read is where they used to have the candy and the roasted peanuts and almonds and cinnamon and everything like that would just greet you the moment you walked in through these doors. So we definitely have to give an honorable mention to the abandoned Elder Beerman right across the parking lot from Sears. And this closed not even a year after Sears, I think around August or maybe July of 2018 and as you can see it is right across from our Sears and here we are at the back entrance or at least what I call the back entrance of the store and really this was the only entrance I ever went in the main reason for that is inside the south entrance right inside the door were all the craftsman tools, hardware, sporting goods, anything you need for your workshop, tool shop, workbench, garage, was all in this entrance in the back. Terrific values like these happen only twice a year. It's Sears National Hardware Sale. You can count on me. This little door here down along the side is where you would drive your car and pick up stuff you ordered. You could always see people pulling up here, getting stuff loaded in their car. And you can take a look inside. I completely failed to notice that there's a, a garden center out here. And if you look, you can kind of see it where it used to be. And I don't really remember it ever being open but it has a door going into where the lawn and garden and tools would be. 
So located here between the back of the Sears and the Sears Auto Center, you have this little hut. And it reminds me of the photo mats, if you remember back in like the 70s and 80s, where you used to pick up and drop off film. But this used to be a Sears key shop. And you can almost see the writing up there before someone spray painted it. And the nice thing about this little shop is that you could just drive right up or pull into one of these adjacent spots and come right up here and have all your keys made. You can kind of see inside what it looks like. As I was walking along the back here, and this is where you would be able to walk in and get your keys made, I noticed these little signs hidden up here. Scissor sharpening. And that is an upside down key sign. So they must have had a uh, sharpening stone to get your scissors sharpened and kitchen cutlery. Also, while I was walking along this place, look what I see and hear running. This air conditioning is still on in the middle of winter. I have no clue how it's getting electricity or why it's running, but it is. Making our way back, you have this really nice uh, walkway. And this first row here, going from the Sears back to the Auto Center, this entire row is where Sears parked their fleet vehicles. Anything from appliance delivery trucks to repair trucks, all were right here. And you had this nice covered uh, pedestrian walk and you can make your way all the way down here to the auto center. So here we are at the Sears Auto Center, located at the back of the uh, building. And this is a really good sized auto center. I had to count them. There's 10 garage doors back there, 10 bays. And those doors are on the opposite side of the building. And as you can see, the paper is down. There's a lot of glare, so we'll come back at night and show you what's inside. I did try to look inside these windows here, but they're this scraped up plastic. You then there's nothing in there anyway to take a look at. Last year, Sears tuned up one million engines, performed more than a million brake repairs, installed over three million shocks, sold upwards of nine million tires, and replaced more batteries than anyone else in America. At Sears, we install confidence. Although I don't have many good photos of it, the building standing alone here used to be a water tower. Sears built their own water towers for their large department stores and it stood at this very foundation. All that really stands is just the base of each pillar on all four corners here as you can see and it stood right back here in the northwest corner of the Sears it would have been this tall water tower. There must have been something here because you can see the original brickwork before they painted everything over. And I was coming around the back here and you can see the rear loading docks. If you can imagine all the trucks that would back in here and deliver goods to the store got these old hanging ceiling lights back here and these really interesting columns. And there is the uh, old Sears sign up front. You can also see it is for sale. And I did check online. This is uh, zoned for mixed usage. 
So anything can really go in here from apartments to uh, medical facilities, shops, which also means, unfortunately, this will more than likely be torn down too, whoever buys this property. Well, that concludes our little walk around tour of Sears. So with the magic of video editing, let's return here back at night so you can have a nice look inside. And here we are in the darkest hours of the night and we are going to take a look at Sears inside. So here's the front main entrance at Central. And let's take a look through this little rip in the paper. And there you are. That is where all the clothing and everything was at. And I think back in uh, this corner was where all of like the uh, home audio and TVs and everything were. As you can see inside here, leading up to the second floor of the store, there are these old escalators. They were Otis escalators. And I'm gonna put another link in the description below of someone who rode these escalators while the store was open. And you can see real close these panels near the bottom. They used to light up all the way up the escalator. And they had these speakers mounted. And they had this old male and female voice from the 50s and 60s like a public service announcement giving you safety instructions on how to properly ride an escalator. Here we are over at the east entrance. Uh, let's take a look inside. So here's inside the east entrance. Over there you can see where the entrance is to Central. And this was all clothing, shoes, and everything on this ground floor. So here's the back entrance that I mentioned earlier before. So here we are. So the moment you walk in to the left would have been all the Craftsman tools, hardware, power tools, and everything would have been here right inside the door. And over on this side, you notice how everything has this nice wood paneling. And all along here was sporting goods, the uh, treadmills, weightlifting benches and everything. And then along the back wall, that was all the lawnmowers, riding lawnmowers, craftsmen, mowers, any type of uh, outdoor tools, power tools. Everything ran against all back there. So here's the Sears Auto Center. As you can see, everything is lit up and the paper is down. So this is where they had everything on display, their tires, uh, diehard batteries, and everything were here. And I wanna show you something really cool. Let me go to the other side. Here's something I noticed. Take a look at this light. It actually lights up when you're, I would assume when your car is ready or when you're waiting for your car. How cool is that? I've never seen anything. That looks all original. Uh, and you can see the bay all the way back there. And there you go. There is the tour of Sears. Thanks for checking it out. And we will see you in the next video.